Hey folks, I'm R.J. Byrne with the University of Georgia Thomas County Extension Office. I'm the Thomas County Agriculture Agent, and today I'm with Dr. Dave Moorhead. And we found the Kogon grass invasion, and Dr. Moorhead is going to talk to you about how to describe its features, or how to identify Kogon grass, and he's going to describe the features of the Kogon grass. Dr. Moorhead? R.J., this is unfortunately one of the things that we're starting to find in Georgia. Uh, it's very common in Florida, Alabama, and Mississippi. Fortunately, we've got just small infestations like we see here today uh, showing up in Georgia, and it's important that we learn what these look like and take care of them because it's a very aggressive grass. Uh, it's very expensive to control, and the uh, Georgia Forestry Commission has a great program. They will come out and actually treat this at no cost to the landowner, but we need to make sure that we identify these spots and inform your county extension agent, your uh, local uh, forestry commission office, so that they can come out and take a look at these and get them under control. Now if you look across here, you'll notice the, the greenish yellow grass color. That's very typical of what you see with Kogon grass. Uh, it, it just looks different than other grasses, and the important feature, notice the white flowering that we see right now. That is unique to uh, Kogon grass, and it only is occurring this time of the year in the spring, in early summer. We have no other grass that looks like this at this time of the year, so it's a great time to get out and try to find it. If you look at the seed head, it has this very fluffy seed head, and in most cases in Georgia, these seeds have very low viability, at least at this point, uh, because most of the seed, or most of these patches, comes from a single clonal line, which produces either seed that has very little or very low viability. Uh, now unfortunately if you get two clones mixed together and they cross uh, pollinate that seed becomes viable and as you can see this floats in the air very much like dandelion seed. It can move several miles in the uh, the air column and once we get to the point that we've got viable seed production this can be a real issue in terms of uh, travel and transport. Right now we think most of the infestations are coming from uh, contaminated equipment, logging equipment, uh, tree planting equipment, utility equipment that has picked up bits and pieces of the roots of the rhizomes. And those are fairly distinctive as well. The, uh, it has a very uh, dense rhizome system that uh, grows out uh, in a circular pattern from the uh, from the uh, stem, these rhizomes will will run out and then turn up and create a uh, a new uh, plant. The leaves are very unique as well. Uh, if you run your fingers across them, they have got uh, a high level of silica in them, and it feels like you're they've got a little serrated edge along the edge of these leaves. Uh, and again, that greenish color is one thing that uh, is a, uh, or the greenish yellow color, is something that is uh, very characteristic of this. It just has a different color than other grasses. Another thing that uh, is often cited with Kogon grass is that it has an offset midrib. Notice the, the rib is slightly offset from center. Now that alone is not a great diagnostic characteristic. Uh, it is consistent with this plant, but there are other grasses that have that uh, same characteristic. Uh, again, the serrated edges, if you run your, run your finger along the edge, you'll feel that serrated edge. Uh, it feels, the leaf feels like sandpaper as well uh, because of the high silica content. Many people ask her if there uh, are things that will eat this, and, and there aren't because of the, uh, the high silica content. So this is a great time of the year to get out and try to find this grass because of the flowering. If you see something like this, stay out of it so that you don't pick up the seeds and potentially spread it. Uh, it also burns extremely hot, so that is another issue that we have, particularly for a, a land manager, that these patches, uh, their fire behavior is much different than uh, our normal vegetation. Uh, if you think you see it, uh, contact your extension office your forestry commission office and uh, someone can get out and take a look at it and determine whether or not this is Kogon grass. Now Dave, what's that website on that you'll have developed for Kogon grass that people could find right away? It's very simple. You can go to just kogongrass.org, C-O-G-O-N-G-R-A-S-S dot -S org. Super Dave. So if you see Kogon grass, we see the 
flowering seed heads. We see this leaf that has a high silica content that's sticky in our fingers and also the root system with these rhizomes that always have these sharp pointed rhizomes. That's right. We we'll probably have cogon grass. Alright Dave, thanks for the information. Thank you.